Hello, welcome to the show. Now, diversity in the creative and media industry is improving, but let's face it, it really did need to improve. And Mama Youth have been at the forefront of this change for over 10, nearly 15 years now, but their work is far from over. Yeah, Kit Plus has always been uh, very aware of the need to encourage diversity in the media industry. We try to help where we can, and we are proactively trying to understand the issues surrounding the challenges that we all face. And it's a challenge for all of us to take on, not just those that are going to benefit. Absolutely. And to help you identify the proactive measures you can take as a business and the benefits you could gain from actively improving the diversity within your organisation, we want to welcome Kate Burns from Mama Youth and Zoe Morris, who has recently benefited from the Mama Youth Project. Hi, Kate. Hi, Zoe. So first of all, Kate, yeah. you've been with Mama Youth for a relatively short period of time. But you've always been a voice for equality in the industry, education, opportunity, etc. How did you find yourself working with Mama Youth? Well, I I went along to Mama Youth initially. Um, I think it was five or six years ago now um, to discover ways in which we could work together and what they do. And I had um, I had lunch with Bob and Clark and Christina, who gave me a general overview. And when I left. I was looking at the broadcast industry with slightly different eyes and I was absolutely buzzing with enthusiasm and inspiration and knew that I wanted to work with them. Uh, so the next few years were we got together uh, a few times, we worked together at events and with some of the trainees, um, but it wasn't really enough. So I we just kept looking for ways to work together and then eventually we, uh, well, well, you know, it all came together about three weeks ago. Um, but I, I may have been a conduit for equality, but that passion I have for supporting the more marginalised um, young people in this industry really stemmed from that initial meeting. So Zoe, how did you, I mean, I've got lots of things I want to ask you, Zoe. How did you hear about Mama Youth to start with? Have you always been interested in the media industry? And... What was the process of getting involved? Um, so I've always been interested in media. Um, growing up, I was really interested in like art and design. Um, and then I always loved TV. TV was like something that I, as a family, we would watch so much and would always talk about, but I never knew that you could really work in it. I didn't know that TV is something that you could actually do for work and make money doing it. Um, and I think, I, initially, I think I heard about Mummy Youth on Twitter, um, but I also saw, um, I saw the post, like kind of like being shared on all of my like, social media and, and, and everything, and, and I applied. And it's really interesting because once you're in something, you see it so much more. And as the years have gone by, I, I did it in uh, 2019. Um, I see it everywhere, every six months when they start the, um, the, pro the application process, I see it everywhere. And it makes me feel like I'm in that world now where, the active change to improve diversity and inclusion. I feel like I'm amongst it, which is which is great because it is something I've always been interested in is seeing or hearing different voices. Um, and I'd like to think that now is a time where we do it, not because we feel like we have to, or there's a burden to do it, but because we generally want to see active change in the media industry. Yeah, you've become yeah, you become. I mean, and you become part of a, not a club, but yeah, you sort of. You're always you're always uh, noticing what Mama have done. Well, what did they do for you, and what were they? What were you able to get from the industry through them that you couldn't have got on your own? So I think Mama Youth really helped me navigate my skill set. Um, like growing up, I, you know, I, I didn't go to university, um, and I didn't have like a lot of contacts in like the kind of working world. So I did naturally customer service, retail, sales, and I've always been a people person, but I just, I kind of wanted to be more creative. And, you know, when you work in somewhere like retail, to be creative is, you know, you get to make the display, you know, in the shop window. But I wanted to really be creative where an idea that I have in my head, I can like talk about it and write it down and, and see it like, come to fruition and um i just i think what mommy you've did for me is that it made me realize that the skills i have are useful and can be used to help make 
make an idea become a real thing. Um, and they train, I trained as a trainee researcher and it really helped me learn, you know, how to, how to communicate my ideas, how to, how to communicate what I, what I want and what I, how I want to achieve things and how, how to produce. I think how to produce something is such an important part when you work in the media because it's great having ideas. It's great knowing what's what and, you know, what's cool and what's, what's new and exciting, but you need to be able to articulate that and really get it out there onto a platform that's bigger than just, you know, you and your friend group or your family, like getting it out there where hundreds, thousands of people can enjoy it as much as you do. Um, so I think the skill set that they've given me is what I've, what I really take to every single company and the production house that I go to. So just quickly about you again, Kate, um, bigger businesses and major broadcasters have a, mm -hmm. a, a diversity officer. Now, many media businesses are simply just not big enough to have a, a dedicated role. Is it? What can they proactively do to help these issues uh, become a thing of the past? Uh, well, work with us, uh, firstly. Um, I'm not an expert on diversity in the workplace. I, I just want to support change. But Mama Youth do do that. Um, we offer partnerships. You can be a talent pool member. You can join the mentoring program. We can talk to you about what you're, you are trying to achieve. Uh, you can ask us who we work with. We have um, patron supporters like Sky, corporate members, Banjay Group, Channel 4, Warner Brothers, um, and talent pool members who are really taking advantage of working with us on these issues. But you don't have to be a huge production company. The ones who benefit the most are actually small production companies who appreciate young talent that's motivated and really ready to hit the ground running. I think the point is, if you want to do something, you can. There are many ways and many companies creating opportunities and change. Uh, be one of them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what you're saying is, yeah, you can almost replace, you are, you are the diversity officer for those that don't have it, really. So I know what to do, come to you, be, you know, work with you to do it. But as someone who's doing, let's say, you know, I'm one of those companies, I'm doing all right, thanks very much, you know, I'm okay. What benefits am I going to get as a business from, you know, what am I getting from it? as well to, to improving your diversity there are so many proven studies that have found yeah. diversity creates better productivity um mckinsey the american management consultants held a study uh, that proved boards perform better credit with um did something that pretty much said the same thing. There are researchers from MIT, Columbia and Northwestern, all the Ivy Leagues that have proved the same things. So they're, they're the facts. Um, if you want a happier, healthier and more productive workforce that works without fear of speaking up or creating ideas or addressing opportunities, they're far more likely your employees to feel they have a platform to do this. If they look around them and see themselves represented in that space, any organisation that has a well-rounded and representative workforce is proven to be fundamental for maximum productivity. If every employee made the same decisions, had the same experience, uh, the same skills, the same opinions, you would kiss goodbye to your strong team dynamic and working relationship. If you work with people like us, uh, people like the RISE, the RISE group, um, run by Sadie Frost and Carrie Ripwood, and if you do your research, it doesn't take long to find out that this information is, is factual and it really does it really does prove its own prove its own worth. And if you in terms of mama use, I would say don't don't for a moment believe that the people we chat train are in any way a charity. You receive a fully trained professional who has been part of a team that produces a program that's called Unmuted and it goes out on Sky Art, uh, you're receiving into your workforce a professional worker. The Mama Youth alumni have a hugely successful percentage rate, 98% of them going through this training and then having jobs in broadcast. I mean, that's hugely impressive. And, and these young people really are. The training is really hard. It's not easy. You have to prove you can do it. The success of Mama Youth lies within those young people. And the fact that Mama Youth Project has won several awards for the work that they do 
um, those results speak for themselves. Yeah. yeah. So Zoe, Brilliant. let's let's deep yeah delve a little bit deeper with that. Talk me through your your time with Mama Youth, um, so that people watching this that might be looking to get involved um, from your side of things, what what did you learn? What did they teach you? Just give us a run through of, of your experiences. So um, you can train as a researcher, a member of crew, which is like camera or sound. You can train as an editor or you can train as a production management or coordinators. I trained as a researcher. And the thing about Mummy Youth that makes it great is you don't just learn what the typical researcher should know. So you learn things like casting and how to speak to uh, other companies and agents and filming permits and everything that's needed to be a researcher. But you also learn other skills like, for example, we had a session on self-shooting. Now, I, prior to Mummy Eve, had never picked up a camera bigger than, you know, a handheld camera. And it was great to learn to self-shoot because naturally when you're on location, I've done loads of location assisting, you get asked, can you shoot? Can you self shoot? Could you get something? And suddenly you can you you stand there and you go, yes, I can. Like I can help. I I've got a skill set that actually lets me, enables me to go into other departments and other people. And then you end up talking to members of crew that usually you wouldn't because you're usually confined to an office. Um, you, you learn to edit as well. You learn to edit on Avid and a bit on Premiere Pro, which is great because the mo the biggest thing now right now is digital content, online content. Um, and you also you you really you really learn how a TV show is made. It's not a case of you start at a job and you don't you don't understand what the post production or pre production. You learn how a TV show is made, and then you really understand where you stand within the production and where you can go with it. And I think it's great because when I speak to my friends that don't work in the industry, they haven't they haven't they're not sure of how a TV show is made, but you as an alumni can really understand the process. And I think it's it's so amazing to be able to do that because it, it really makes you think, I can go anywhere now that I've graduated from the Mum Youth Project. Yeah, and just to follow yeah, on for that, is the training in a classroom university style or is it by a placement with a company or can you do it at home? What's the format? Um, it's, it's both, I mean, you do, um, so the way it works is you do four weeks training um, at Sky Studios. That's where it's, where Mummy Youth is based, and um, you do four weeks of training, like in quite intense training of how a TV show is made, um, and then you spend ten weeks basically here on production, um, booking locations, booking uh, stories and um, factual kind of like items to film, um, and then at the end of it, you get offered a placement. My placement was at the BBC. Um, and I was with the BBC documentary team and I had a great time. Um, I was there for around six weeks. And in that time, you, you really learn what networking is. You learn what being a freelancer is all about. You learn that to, to get more out of your day, you need to ask questions. And, you know, you really, you really learn how the industry works, which is, is fantastic. And so you were doing it in 2019. Where are, where, what's your day to day now? Are you, are you, I mean, what, what, where are you working at the moment? That's the question. What are you working on? So uh, I'm a freelance uh, runner, location assistant, um, but I've done, I've done quite a lot in that short time. I've worked for the BBC, I've worked for Channel 4, I've worked for Channel 5, um, I've done a little bit for E4. Uh, I'm currently doing something with ITV2, a new dating show out. Um, should be the next few months actually just depending on the current situation um, but my the way I wanted to navigate after Mama Youth was to really try a little bit of everything um, and I would say that I'm quite settled now in factory entertainment which is what I actually enjoy watching the most so it's great to know that I'm in an area of the industry that I actually enjoy watching and a lot of the time it's I'm telling my friends to watch something because I've worked on it and it's it's so rewarding to be able to do that because you know you get to really see the benefits of what you do day to day and you can share it with you know who you live with or your family it's great 
Is there a just one, one big tip you can give to anyone who wants to go through this process? Um, the biggest bit of advice I would give is to just be show your enthusiasm because don't be afraid to show yeah. how interested you are. Questions and, you know, asking, could I have a go? Could I have a try? It's so rewarding because, mm. you know, everyone is willing to to help you and to show you and help you grow so i think if you're interested in something show that interest um and just be ready to learn because you will always learn in yeah. tv every single day you'll learn something new <laughs> so if we can just go back over to kate again kate who who should apply to mama youth um and how do they apply uh, well, we take um, young people uh, between the ages of 18 and 24, but that isn't um, a hard and fast rule. Um, and we tend to take uh, BAME and white working class, people with challenging backgrounds. So we've had people who have been young offenders, um, you know, been in prison, people whose parents haven't been around. Um, it's, it's, they take young people who society has already kind of said no, it's not for you uh, and the reason it was founded in the first place is because Bob um, in 20, uh, 2005 looked around um, his working area and he couldn't he there wasn't anyone who looked like him so he so he started it up and what we have found is that the young people who come through because some of them have had a far more challenging background um, there is a, a professionalism and a strength and a lack of entitlement that is glorious and so refreshing. And I, I, I appreciate I might be biased, but these young people are magnificent. They truly are. They need chances. They need opportunities, particularly in the last couple of years with what's happened with the pandemic and how long that's going to affect us. You won't go wrong taking on a mama youth trainee, I promise you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be so successful. So I guess finally, the, the one thing is that what can we do? Uh, this is, again, at Kate, really. Um, you know, we, we notice that sometimes it can be a difficult conversation for some of us to have, and that needs to stop. We can't be afraid of this. What? How do we go about that? Well, no, we, we can't be afraid of the conversation. And I think the ignorance is bliss. It's no longer a viable response either. Um, but when Bob started this in, in, in 2005, sorry, and the fact that that conversation is still difficult to have, I think says a lot. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mistakes. But the reaction to those mistakes is hugely important in how an organisation works things and what it portrays to its staff so just start the conversation the default response we have is frequently silence until it's perceived to be safe to speak and i think there's many white-led organizations avoid talking about race because they're worried of being seen as prejudiced or that they'll offend somehow and managers think they lack the skills to have these conversations but if 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 you're always silent in these times, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you've already chosen how you are being represented. We, we can't keep resting on the laurels of our company diversity statements and the HR handbooks. That in, in this industry, there are so many companies that are working on these issues and the workforce in general is growing all the time with more women, ethnic minorities, members of LGBT, community and they're providing valuable skills and experience in our industry in particular a tv is watched by almost everyone in the world in whatever platform you watch it it should be made by everyone if it's watched by everyone that's that's a great point to end on kate thank you very much for joining us today all the best in your career zoe and good luck of course kate helping mama youth take more underrepresented youngsters into a successful career in our wonderful industry Thanks for watching and thanks of course to Media Proxy as always for supporting the show. You can check them out at mediaproxy.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.